Welcome to Us Crazy Christians, where we uncover Christian myths and Bible misinterpretations with common sense Christianity. I'm your host, William E. Smith, and, and today we're going to talk about the secret pre-tribulation rapture of the church. Stick around. Did you know that there is absolutely not even one verse of scripture in the Bible that mentions the rapture? If you study the history of our common view of the rapture and the end times, you will discover that the way that we view it today was not taught by anyone in church history up until the 1500s. And that was widely ignored until the 1800s. In the 1800s, they began to print out Bibles on a mass scale to try to have everyone have their own Bible. And those translators and those printers took the idea of a man, one person in the 1500s, and put that in their printed literature of the Bible, of those New Testament scriptures, which led to the widespread belief in the current rapture and end time beliefs we have today. But again, before that, the early church fathers, the early first century Christians, had a total opposite view of the end times and the rapture. There are four passages in scripture that people use to teach this rapture idea. Let's get into it. 1 Thessalonians 4 verses 13 through 18 says, We will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Now, in history, and even in context of this scripture, you can clearly see that Paul was talking to the Thessalonian church about the great suffering and persecutions they were currently experiencing. Paul even says as much in that letter. Members of the Thessalonian church had been murdered because of their faith, which is who Paul was referring to as being resurrected as Jesus was resurrected as Jesus was resurrected this was not about a secret rapture 7 years before the resurrection it seems possible that Paul is talking about the final resurrection when the books are opened and people are judged for their works and etc during the final judgment will you search it for yourself let me make an additional point about this scripture a lot of us currently view air as meaning the sky. But the literal Greek word refers to our atmosphere, the air we breathe that surrounds us on the earth. Also consider the fact that the higher we go in the sky, the less air there is. If you go high enough, you will suffocate and die. The term meet the Lord, where it says caught up to meet the Lord. Meet the Lord in the Greek refers to greeting someone. Like, hello, nice to meet you. Think about that. We view caught up as to be lifted up in the sky. But in the Greek, it means to catch up. For example, if you are walking down a street with your child and your child runs ahead of you and you say, hey, stop and you catch up to your child. That is what it means. Not caught up in the air. Scripture says that Christ will be equally yoked with his bride, the church, us. So could this scripture be referring to us catching up to Christ and his likeness and his image in the earth, his glory, his holiness? us being transformed in a moment in a twinkling of an eye to be equally yoked as the bride of Christ, then we will meet or greet Jesus on earth in this atmosphere. Think about it. Matthew chapter 24, verses 40 through 42. Two men in the field, one will be taken, another left. Two women grinding at the meal, one will be taken, another left. 
History shows, records, that there were random killings by the Romans in the siege on Jerusalem in 70 AD. As a matter of fact, the entire end time prophecy that Jesus is talking about in Matthew 24 is about the destruction in 70 AD, which we delved into in a bunch of other videos in the same end time series. And on top of all of that, Jesus said that all of these things mentioned, two men in the field, one taken, two women at the meal, one taken, that all of that and all the other stuff he mentioned would happen before this generation standing before him would pass. Again, we went into more detail about this in other videos in this series, like the video on 70 AD. Check that out. The book of Revelation, chapter 4, verse 1 says, A door opened in heaven with a voice saying, Come up here. People equate that and use that in reference to the rapture. But in context, it's clear to see that John was talking about something that had happened to himself. Although his body was still imprisoned on the Isle of Patmos, his spirit or his mind were caught up into the upper heavens to be shown things by Jesus. He was talking about his self, his spiritual situation, not the rapture of the church. In Revelation chapter 12, verse 5, it talks about the child being caught up to God and his throne. But that is referring to the ascension of Christ, not the church, which is, explains why child is capitalized. It is talking about Jesus. And that's even more clear if you read it in context. You have to imagine, you have to bend, you have to flex with the rapture idea to make these scriptures fit into that paradigm. But if you just simply read them in context, as the writer meant, you will see they're not talking about any kind of rapture of the church. Let it marinate. I encourage you to read these verses again. Research it for yourself in context without any preconceived notions, theories, ideas, and let the truth speak for itself. Let the Holy Spirit bring the truth alive unto you. Use your common sense Christianity. If you would like a more detailed and in-depth study about the rapture, I encourage you, read Dr. Jonathan Welton's book, Rapturous. It'll bless you. It's a great read. Hope it blessed you. I hope it freed you. If you want to see more from us crazy Christians, do me a favor. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Hit the notifications bell so you can be notified every time we post a new video. Thanks for watching us crazy Christians. Until next time, be blessed.